Last week, I encouraged Christians in their evangelism efforts and spoke about things concerning their service to fellow Christians and how they can develop the ability to teach the Word of God accurately and truly and to do evangelism as God has called them to do. But as I was doing that video, I was thinking about another passage as well. Because there are a number of people in the religious world who believe that they are Christians, who feel that they are teaching people how to be saved, how to become Christians, and so on. And yet, whenever you look at certain passages, such as 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, we see that there is an importance placed on testing ourselves, seeing whether or not we are in the faith in the first place. It says, test yourselves if you are in the faith. Test yourselves, or do you not fully know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, lest you are unapproved? So again, this passage encourages us to test ourselves, to see whether we are in the faith or not. But also it talks about the possibility of being unapproved. And I think one way we can test ourselves, to see whether or not we are in the faith, and whether or not the things we are teaching others is accurate and true, is by looking at the Great Commission, as found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Because I have found that people who feel that they are Christians do not actually go to these passages very much, which is kind of disturbing whenever you see these texts and how they lay out various things that are necessary in order for one to become a Christian. If you look in Matthew chapter 28, in verses 19 and 20, the passage tells us, when you travel, make disciples of all the nations, immersing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, as many things as I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all the days until the end of the world. Amen. So this particular passage stresses the importance of immersing individuals into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and also to teach them concerning things that Jesus has commanded. If you turn to Mark chapter 16, in verses 15 and 16, we can see something else. And he said to them, When you travel into all the world, preach the good news to the whole creation. He who believes and is immersed will be saved, but he who disbelieves will be condemned. This particular passage is important for us because it shows that just getting someone's head wet, or as it should actually be done, getting someone's entire body wet and being immersed completely, does nothing if the person does not believe. And likewise, you see a connection between belief and immersion. They need to go together, and you can't separate one from the other. Then you can also go to Luke chapter 24 and look at verses 46 and 47. And he said to them, Thus it has been written that it was essential for the Christ to suffer and to rise up from the dead in the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. So here it speaks about repentance. There needs to be a change of heart, a change of mind, and also that we are to preach forgiveness of sins. So, looking at all of these things, we see that it is important to speak of the commands of Jesus. It's important to speak of belief and immersion, of repentance, and how Jesus is the means through which we can have the forgiveness of sins. And I could go on. We could take a look at passages from the book of Acts and other places where we know that individuals became Christians in that particular book. And if we follow the example found in the book of Acts, and follow these texts that we have just looked at here, we can find what one needs to do in order to be saved, in order to become a Christian. And so I want you to consider these things. Please test yourself to see whether or not you are in the faith. Whenever you are speaking to people about the gospel, about the good news of Jesus Christ, and you are trying to do evangelism, do you ever go to these passages in Matthew, Mark, and Luke do you ever go to the passages in the book of Acts, or do you not? I think the answer to those questions, whether you do or whether you do not, will help you to see whether or not you are in the faith, or whether or not there is some other thing that is going on. 
Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and have a nice day.